It's time to get in the flow with Pastor Latiska Powell. Restoring the broken, torn, and seem to be forgotten people of God. Freedom to see yourself differently, liberating you to become who you are. Authentic opulence. Operating in the image of God. Wealthy. Born to live. Let's get in the flow. Come spend the next 30 minutes. Get in the flow. In the flow. The flow. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be here, and I'm glad that you are showing up. You already know who it is. It's Pastor Latiska Powell. Today, I have an amazing guest. Her name is Lasagna Lala Thomas. Let me tell you a little bit about her. She's single. She's been a nurse for over 30 years. She currently is the assistant director of nursing in the state of Michigan. She's active in church and leads a prayer group daily, small prayer group. It's going to grow. Wait till I finish this list. A member of Gamma Phi Delta, the youth advisor for Gamma Mu. Her ultimate goal is to work in ministry full time. Did I not tell you it's coming to pass? She's a COVID survivor. You know how we do it. Built to last. A, a judge in the upcoming pound cake challenge in Southfield, Michigan. December 2nd with Angie B Productions and Barty. Oh my God. Come on in here, Lasaya. Let us know what's going on. Hey, how are you? I am in the great state of Michigan. Um, I'm so glad I woke up this morning and I am looking forward to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Amen. I know that's right. Let me go on and put, give me a little shout out right quick. I had to go back on myself, Lasagna. Then we're going to come back. And for my viewers, Latiska is in Maryland, where it is COLD. It has not snowed yet. You know, I got to get ready ready really ready for that i'm not ready i'm not ready messiah tell me what got you into nursing for 30 years um when i was five years old i was on the playground with some kids and the bigger kids you know how they push you in the back of the swing someone was pumping the back of the swing and it made it go over and so i fell and i had a very severe concussion i was in the hospital for over six weeks and the first lady i saw i thought she was an angel i thought i had died and she was so very kind to me all the time that i was in that hospital every day she came to see about me and uh, one of the nurses was very very mean to me one day and she took she took over like she was my mama she was my mama bear and she took care of me and i just thought i want to care for people like that and so that's just always been my passion my entire life. Amen. Now, at the, being the assistant director of nursing in, Missi in Michigan, what does that entail? What do you have to deal with on a daily basis? On a daily basis, I, I manage people. I ha You have to manage yourself first because you can't manage people if you can't manage yourself. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I have to make sure that I'm in the right state of mind, right step frame of mind. Once so that I can encourage and motivate people, I have to be their liaison and their advocate. And you also have to be able to have corrective conversations with people, not necessarily put them down, but tell them, you know what, you didn't quite meet the mark in this area right now, but let's revisit this and see how we can do it better the next time. And so when you teach them how to um, do their jobs effectively and appropriately, then that goes forward and teach other people. While I'm doing that, I also have to make sure that I have enough staff for my patients to be cared for appropriately. Um, and that's the really biggest part of my job that we're doing what we're supposed to do according to the state mandates. Wow. Now, how many patients do you have daily? Do, uh, we always do have at least... Um, about 200, 232 patients. Ooh, that's the mother load. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are um, mentally people who are certified either incompetent or not guilty by reason of insanity. And so it's our job to either get them competent enough to stand trial or get them competent enough where we can rehabilitate them to gradually put them back out in the community. So they have committed some heinous crimes or 
Yes, ma'am. Mm. And how is that? You know, as far as I guess you have to be built for it tough to do that. You know, to <laughs> build. <laughs> for me, you have to be able to disassociate yourself. I grew up in the projects, so it's not much I haven't seen. It's not much I haven't seen. Um, but throughout my career, I grew up in I. Well, I did. I grew up in nursing and corrections. So I seen some whole bunch of stuff. And so I didn't understand when they say, well, you know, out in the world. And I, when I first got there, I'm like, what do they mean out in the world? But being in a correctional or a penal colony is like, yeah, it's a whole different type of thinking. So when I walk through the door, I'm no longer Lala. I'm, I'm that nurse. I'm that girl. I'm whoever I need to be when I get there. But when I walk back out that door, when I go back to my family, I'm, I'm Lala. I'm Sonia. I'm, 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 I'm who I need to be. You have to be able to disassociate your situation from what is the actuality. Because if you don't, if you knew what some of these people did and um, how close you are to danger, you would lose your mind. You'll never walk out the house. Wow. And it's just a mental state. It's, it's just a mental state. Now I want to, let's touch on that. Do you think it's like a dis detachment from reality? that we're really dealing with? You know, I, I personally, personally, I do believe that some people have um, some demons in them. When you sit back and talk and they tell you with sincerity, it wasn't me, but mm. I saw the cameras. It was you, it was you, you did do that. But in their mind, no, it wasn't me. And when you sit back and talk to them, it's almost as if, um, they were two separate people. Now, some people have some thought process, their judgment, um, psychologically, not psychology, scientifically, they say they have some problems with their neuroreceptors or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think that could be true as well. Um, but I think we're working in two things. Some things I think is demonic and something I think is just um, scientifically, they're medically incompetent. Ah, and I'm, I'm a firm, but I'm, you know, I'm the science side of the mm -hmm. team when it comes to religion. I believe that you know the mind can take you, your mind can truly take you anywhere. Mm -hmm. The key to it is holding yourself responsible for whatever you allow your mind to take you to. You know? Yes, yes, yes. Being aware that it's it's only a decision. It's almost like prayer. Like you know, mm -hmm. you hear something that you know something negative comes to you because thoughts don't belong to us; they come to us. Mm -hmm. So a thought comes into your mind and you entertain something that's not mm -hmm. the best of things to do. Mm -hmm. I don't have a question. Do you think mental health is really a demonic invasion? I myself don't. I think that someone is separating themselves mm -hmm. from reality mm -hmm. and not holding themselves accountable. I don't know what situation you went through to even have that kind of thought come to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You have to experience mm -hmm. things to even mm -hmm. for them to call, you know, return back unto you. Mm -hmm. I would never, let me, I'm going to give you an example. I've never seen anyone kill. I've seen someone in an accident pass in mm -hmm. front of me, but I've never seen, you know, gun and somebody shooting that I, never seen that, right? Mm -hmm. So that kind of memory could never come to me. Because that has never mm -hmm. been my experience. Now, mm -hmm. who am I to say what you've seen and what kind of life you've lived for those recalls to come back? Mm -hmm. You know, who did something to you, or who did you see someone do something to? Why is it you can't let it go? Why is this memory continuously popping back into you? You know, mm -hmm. why not deal with the issue at hand? You know, that's getting to the, as they say, you know, you, know, you have a brew of a cut. Let's get to the root. It's a reason why that thought is continuously popping back in you. You've never dealt with it. You never spoke on it. You never, you know, and you're just kind of holding it in. Mm -hmm. That's not healthy. That's how you hurt people because you got to let it go. And you got to deal with what you saw to the best of your ability. Mm -hmm. You know, even when I was in school to be a therapist, we heard some heinous stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, to hear fathers molesting their babies. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about putting his whole, you know what I'm saying, into a baby's mm -hmm. what? And the mama sitting right there, like, it's okay. Like, mm -hmm. 
What kind of conversation did you two have to come together? This is a crazy union to me. Because mm -hmm. that means you don't have some serious conversation to say, well, let's see if we can do this. Mm -hmm. And it's okay with the family. Mm -hmm. I don't get that. And I'm not, I can't judge it, but I mm -hmm. understand it stems from something. And until we deal with what was seen, we cannot really deal with the issue. All right, let's exhale. Who's <laughs> <laughs> Let's move off of that. Let's get off mm -hmm. of that. Tell me about your ministry. That was the question. Um, currently, right now, I, I am at the first responders ministry in my church. And so if anything medically goes wrong during the church, it's my job to ensure that one, the service is not impeded that the person maintain their dignity, that I'm able to remove them from the sanctuary, provide them some pro uh, privacy and allow them to be sick while maintaining their dignity and then getting them any type of help that they need. That's one of the ministries at church. I, I'm also in the choir um, and I assist the pastor in any way that they need assistance in. Um, my the prayer group that I am is just my personal thing. It started out as I was having some challenges and difficulty at work, totally a hostile working environment. And so I thought I know that prayer changes things. And so it started with my friend and I said, for 21 days, let's just pray. Ooh. Period. And from that, she added a young lady. And then from that, I added three more. And so um, Monday through Friday at 715, we get on our Zoom call and we pray for 15 minutes. We do a weekly affirmation. We do da daily manifestation. Uh, we have a dedicated um, prayer list. We pray for those people specifically every Monday and throughout the week. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. As far as going into full time ministry, I really can't say exactly what I what I want to do, but I'm flexible to do whatever God needs me to do. And so if my pastor or first lady have to travel the world, I want to be free to be able to travel with them and carry their bags and do whatever they need. If they need somebody to run the bookstore, I'm OK with running the bookstore. If they need somebody just to be in the church to answer the phone, I'm flexible to do that as well. Whatever God needs me to do, I'm flexible to do it. Okay. And so this kind of like, um, I was reading, is it Colossians? Mm. In Colossians, it says, I'm going to find it. When we go on break, I'm going to find it. Mm. And I'm, we're going to talk about this particular scripture. But it mm. says God has every, has put everything where he wants it. And so mm. I'm saying, you know, I, you look at trees, I always compare God to nature because he's a natural mm -hmm. force to me. And, you know, trees just stand. You know, they don't complain and whether they have leaves on them or, you know, they're in full bloom or mm -hmm. whatever. You know, they could be beside a weed and they just stand. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, we don't just stand. You mm -hmm. know, those thought processes come, those winds come and, you know, mm -hmm. that's what I consider the wind. The wind comes and you make a different decision and the wind sways you somewhere else and paying attention to when the wind blows in you mm -hmm. and learning how to stand. Mm -hmm. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. That is true. Now I'm going to say on a spiritual level, this is how we, we look at it. God is a part of everything that exists. So everything is connected on a spiritual level so we're connected here and we're connected here those are the two things that he tells us to keep on in order at all times so he draws unto us the desires of our hearts so when he draws unto us the desires of our hearts everything that's attached everyone that's attached to that particular dream or aspect of you all of those people come and play like we we say we come and play together we meet we play together in that that time and space because that's what we are here to do in union Okay, question for the guests. How do you work with you? What are their ages? Well, I am a member of Gamma Phi Delta Sorority Incorporated, Gamma Mu Chapter, and we have several different um, organizations. We have our Rosebuds, which is from 6 to 12. Then we have our Phi Teens, which is from 13 to 18. And so, and, and, 
the Rosebuds and Fighteens would be the young ladies, the ca Junior Cavaliers and the Cavaliers would be the young men. And so I work with them. We do a lot of community and charity work right now. We are collect collecting um, hats and gloves for disadvantaged youth in the Detroit system. And so um, I just have a box outside my door. I collect them when we get a, at least 20. I take them and drop them off to the schools. Um, we also go to... Um, I can't even think of the name of Covington House. That might not be the name of it. And we donate clothes and masks and those type of things. We want to um, educate our children so that one, we want them to go to college so they can be better people or any type of trade schools, or we want to teach them about um, the stock market, how to make money, how to become entrepreneurs and those type of things. We want them, our theme for this year is, oh, the places you'll go. And so whereas most people do vision boards, they'll be doing vision books because they're so young in age, we'll be teaching them at this point of your life, you should be hitting these goals. At this point of your life, you should be hitting these goals. And at this point of your life, you should hitting, be hitting these goals, ultimately preparing for when the day you don't work. But how are you going to do it? We tell them to go to college and we tell them to be great adults, but we don't always give them the tools to do it. And so that's one of the things we'll be working on for our young people this year. And we, we will be having a meet and greet December the 11th. We have to, we have to take a break. Guys, okay. Like that. All right. Greetings, I'm Loretta, host of So What's the Problem TV show. It airs Thursdays at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. I conduct interviews and I spread awareness. If you follow my page, you'll get the notifications and you will never miss an episode. A cheerful heart is good medicine and laughter is good for the soul. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching today's episode of the Flow Network TV show with Pastor Latiska Powell. We'll be back with more of her exciting interview in just a moment. But first, you are cordially invited to join the tour that Angie B presents as the book tour comes to Southfield, Michigan. Join us Saturday, December 3rd, 2022, from noon until 6 p.m. You will meet authors, ministry leaders, entrepreneurs, and more. Arrive on time so you can order your lunch. Our lunch sponsor for the day is the Honey Baked Ham Company. All lunch orders will be delivered in a timely manner. So join us for the day. We'll be at the Comfort Suites meeting space at 24977 Northwest Highway in Southfield, Michigan. Save the date, bring your family and come shop for the holidays. Our special guest, Sister Thomas, is a guest judge at Barty's Pound Cake Tasting Challenge. That takes place on Friday, December 2nd at 7 p.m. Cake must be homemade. Entry fee is $10, which can be paid via cash app or in person when you arrive for the contest. Although our guest today is a judge, Barty does have the final decision and the grand prize winner will accept either cash or cash app. And we ask them to smile for the camera. The tour that Angie B presents is an outreach ministry and we look forward to seeing all of you 
on the road. Now it's time to get back to our show, The Flow Network, with Pastor Latiska Powell. All right, Lasagna, come on back in so you can finish telling us about these goals. All right. And so as we tell our children, we, we want to give them the tools to reach every goal. We want to teach them how to mon- manage their money. We want to teach them how to start entrepreneur businesses. We want to teach we want to give them the tools to do everything they need to do, not just tell them, okay, this is what you need to do. Amen for that. Now tell us how did you get caught up in this cake contest? I was on Facebook and um, I joined the Pound Cake Club or site some years ago. And every now and then I take and save a pound cake. And one of the young ladies just reached out to me. I believe her name is Angie B. And she asked me, um, would I be interested? And I'm like, yeah, why not? Why not? So you're up for judging these cakes. Well, I get to eat cake. Hey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The first time I met Angie B, we went out to Applebee's, Applebee's. And so everybody ordered their food and we decided to eat the sweets first. So sweets mm-hmm. were the sweets first and then mm-hmm. we get into the food. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's loving on yourself a little bit, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Now, is there any particular thing you would like to tell us just about you, who you are, what's in your heart? You know what, my, my, um, for the last 22 years, I took care of my mom and I've always been a a caregiver. Um, and I've always sometimes, well, yeah, most of the time I put other people's needs before my own. And so now at this state of my life, I I really encourage people to put yourself first, um, because you can't care for anybody else if you broke down, you know, and a lot of times when you see caregivers, Um, taking care of their family member, you'll see them with a new family member taking care of them because the caregiver, the original caregiver died because they didn't take care of themselves. And so now it's, it's, I encourage all ladies, especially African-American women to um, learn what your A1C is, learn what your glyphorial rate is, learn what your, where your levels are in relation to your heart and your bone density so that you can prevent a lot of things that's going to possibly cause you harm later in life. Um, eat the cake if you want to eat the cake for that day. Take 50, my pastor, um, as I was caring for my mother, and I woke up in the mirror and I knew I didn't look my best. I actually looked pretty horrid, but I went to church. I was cute, but mm-hmm. I looked so run down. And my pastor said, Sister Sonia, you need to take an hour out of your day just for yourself. And I looked at him like he was crazy. And I told him, I said, Pastor, I don't have a time. I don't have an hour in a day to take care of myself. But I, I, um, oh, I can't even think of her name, but it's one of the singers. She said, I hit the wall, boom. And I had that hit the wall moment to where I, I literally sat there and cried because I was so tired. And I finally told my mother, I said, you know, mama, I said, when I come home from work, I need you to give me an hour just to myself. And I and she was OK with it. And I would go in my bedroom and I would close the door. I would have me a cup of tea and watch something silly on TV or read a book. Or I would just sit there for an hour and sip my tea. And I found myself becoming distressed. My blood pressure had lowered. I was getting more sleep. Um, I found myself being a better person to myself Mm -hmm. and um, I would neglect sleep. And one of my girlfriends says, Sonia, you know, sleep is not an option because truly it was not unusual for me to go 36 hours without any sleep. And Mm -hmm. so now I make it my habit. I must get at least six hours of sleep. I'm going to say this because I, people say I'm 50. I'm ageless, but people say I'm Mm -hmm. 50. Okay. It's some things that, you have to give yourself permission Mm -hmm. to do like i date myself Mm -hmm. i I take myself out to eat i go out walk Mm -hmm. by myself and i tell Mm -hmm. people being you have to be okay with being with yourself yes yeah how much can i give anybody if i have not poured into myself if i hadn't had a quiet time of just me and god because god is in me Mm -hmm. So I got yeah. it. Hold up, let yeah. me. And it's a scripture in Revelations. I think it's Revelations twelve, where he says, "Have I not endured your suffering long enough?" You know, mm-hmm. when you realize that God is in me, 
and mm-hmm. you realize some of the things you put your God through and you've done served mm-hmm. all these other mm-hmm. gods and did everything they want to do to do. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you'd be like, I, I give myself permission to have yeah. peace. I give myself permission to uh be wealthy. I give myself permission to do a lot of things because I give myself permission to do that thing that God created me to do. Have life and have it more abundantly. Having yeah. life more abundantly is going beyond my own thought process. Mm-hmm. Of, mm-hmm. You, let, let me give you this. Talking to my son, my son says, well, mom, I want you to X, Y, Z. And I'm looking, listening to the conversation. I'm saying to myself, you only see me as a mother. That's the only that's the only thing you see in me. But before I was a mother, my name was Latuska. That was mm-hmm. given to me also. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Nobody yeah. concerned about who is Latuska or who was Latuska before she was Latuska or what is the potential inside of Latuska. People just mm-hmm. want you to be who they want you to be. You have to give your permission, yourself permission to be mm-hmm. exactly who you want to be. Mm-hmm. Because God said, whatever you choose, I, I'm with you. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. so for some reason we are so scared to make that decision to be happy and whole and secure mm-hmm. within ourselves. You know, mm-hmm. we have all these codependency relationships, like mm-hmm. parents depending on children, and you know, and friends depending on friends, and everybody mm-hmm. leading and carrying on with one another. Well, when are we gonna get self-sustaining out here? You, you know, know, my one of my friends, she um, told me, you know, Sonia, no, it's a complete sentence. And I've adopted that. I tell people no. And I don't explain. And when they say why, I say, I'm sorry. It's just no. We, no. And then it's, it's the same in every language. If I went yeah. to China and said no, they would know exactly what that means. And I have the mm-hmm. right to say, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. No. no. And then why, no. Why, who told you I had to explain anything to you? No, no, I'm not doing that. Another thing I um start saying, that's not my issue. When people come with their problems, well, I'm so sorry. That's not my issue. I am not picking up that bag. I know that's right. Guys, no, that's not my issue. I want to say thank you, Fanya, Lala, Thomas, for coming on to the show. I really enjoyed it. And thank you guys for watching. I want you to like, share, and subscribe to Angie B. Now, Evangelist Angie B is out here doing her thing. Mm -hmm. And let's get into what is the flow. The flow is freedom to be who you are. You have that freedom now. Hell, liberating yourself to be authentic. Oh, opulent. Operating in the image of God. And W, wealthy. We are born to give. You guys have a beautiful evening. I love you. Later. <laughs>